right guys, so for this trick, we can take the deck here, give it a nice little shuffle, and actually before we do anything, I just want the spectator to reach in and pull out any card, but to not look at it yet. So just go ahead and pull out any card that you want. We'll use it as a mystery card and we'll set it off to the side and put it under the box for now. We'll get back to it a little bit later. So now I actually need you to select a card that yes, you can look at. So you can go ahead and touch any card, 100% free choice. Let's say that I touch this card. I'll turn my head away so I'm not looking, okay? But please go ahead and remember this card. I would go ahead and push it in and instantly hand the deck over to the spectator. So they would go ahead and instantly shuffle the cards, okay? And they can do this as much as they want. They can take the cards and give it a nice riffle shuffle. They can cut the cards as many times as they want, do whatever their heart desires to this deck, okay? And I can take the cards back and I can give it a little bit of a pharaoh shuffle here just to get it even more mixed up, okay? So the card is completely lost somewhere in the pack somewhere. I have no idea where it is. You have no idea where it is. You shuffled the deck completely. So now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have the spectator reach over, cut the deck and take the other half, just place it on top like this, like diagonally so we can mark the spot where we cut. We'll get back to that later. But now let's take a look at this uh, mystery card that you had chosen beforehand. Remember, I spread the cards out. You pulled out any card and I just set it over here. Uh, that, so it's the nine of hearts. This wasn't your card, was it? Okay, because that, that would be pretty insane, but no, this is not your card, it's the nine of hearts. Um, so I don't know why, you just randomly chose this card. Um, did you have any reason for choosing it? They say, no, it's just random. So I say, okay, well, all things happen for a reason. So there must be a reason why you chose the nine. Maybe your card, it, I don't know, we can try this. It would be insane if this happened, but what if we counted nine cards down from where you cut and your card was there. That would be kind of insane. So I would actually invite the spectator to just take uh, the nine cards here from where they cut and see what the ninth card is from where they cut, okay? So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. For the first time, the spectator can name the card out loud the two of hearts. Hopefully that was the spectator's card. They could have selected any card. They could have cut anywhere. They could have chosen any mystery card. They shuffled the deck as much as they wanted. And yeah, that is the trick, guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to stick around for the tutorial. All right, guys, so here's the tutorial for the trick that you just saw. So before I actually teach you the trick that you saw in the performance, I first wanna show you guys the utility move that I used in the performance. And if you guys do not know what this is that I'm about to teach you, then your guys' lives will be changed today. Some of you may or may not have used this technique before, and trust me, guys, if you have not used this before, you will start using this now until the day you die. Forget every single card control that you ever learned because this is all you need. And guess what? It requires zero skill. So what am I talking about exactly? Well, what I'm talking about is a card crimp. That is how I performed the trick in the performance. That is how you can have the spectator select any card in the deck, push it in, and have the spectator shuffle the cards as much as they want. They can shuffle the cards completely like this, and you can take the cards back and instantly find their card and control it however you want. So if you guys have never heard of a crimp before, you guys might be wondering what that even is. So a crimp can be used in many different ways, but the crimp that I'm gonna be teaching you guys today is just a very tiny corner crimp. Now, before you guys see what I'm about to do, I just wanna mention that a card crimp does not actually ruin the cards. You guys might see what I'm about to do and you guys might be really afraid to ruin your cards. But trust me guys, if you do it correctly, you can easily take the crimp out and the card will be 100% back to normal. Because a card crimp is not folding the corner over like completely. You're not taking the card and literally taking the corner and folding it as hard as possible. All a crimp is, is like that. That's literally all it is and look at that. It's so, so small, so, so small. That's literally all the crimp is that I'm gonna be showing you guys today. And whenever I want, I can just instantly take it out. There you go, now the card is back to normal. So that's really all that I'm doing. And how I'm putting the crimp in the card is during the selection process. So this is essentially how to apply the crimp to their selection. So you have the spectator, 
select any card from the pack. They can't take it out, but you're just gonna out jog the card that they touched and you're gonna lift up your hands and show the spectator. As you can see, you're now in the perfect position because since your hands are like this, your thumb is just naturally right here on the bottom left corner. So all you have to do is just kind of sneak in under there and just ever so slightly lift up like that, just a little bit like this as you're showing the spectator the card. And there you go, that's literally all I have to do. That's enough of a crimp in order for me to find the card. When I square up the cards, I can have the spectator shuffle the cards and you can see right there, if I focus the camera there, I can very, very clearly see where that card is, where that crimp is located in the pack. I actually forgot to look at the card, so we can try it out with a different card. So one more time, let's say the spectator selects any card and I'll look at it this time. Okay, we got the 10 of diamonds over here. As they're looking at the card, all you're gonna do is take your thumb, just ever so slightly touch that corner, lift it up just ever so slightly, square up the cards and hand the cards over to the spectator. Now you might be wondering, wait, but the spectator is gonna see this crimp. No, they're not. If they're not looking for it, they will never find it. And the spectators have handled decks of cards before that have probably had little bends and little folds in them. So they're not gonna think anything about it if they see it. And they probably won't even see it because they're gonna be shuffling the cards as much as they want the entire time. So the cards are being shuffled. And now all I have to do is find where that crimp is. And sometimes what the spectator will do is just instantly shuffle it close to the top. So right now I can see it's actually the second card from the top. So if I want it to be on top, I can just slip cut that top card in the middle and there you go, now the spectator selection is on the top of the deck. And that's really all that a crimp is. So it's just a little corner bend in the card. And if you guys get the cards back and you don't see it here, all you have to do is just rotate the deck so you can see it on the other side. And when you find it, you can just cut the cards. What I sometimes do is I cut the cards at the crimp and then I give them a little ferro shuffle like this just to make it look like the cards are getting more mixed up, but I just cut the card over to the top. So yeah, guys, now that you know what the crimp is, you guys will be using this from now on. Like this is the fairest card control ever in the entire world. You can literally hand the cards over to the spectator. They can do whatever they want. They can do this kind of shuffle where they like shuffle the cards like this that can completely mess up the order of the deck. And when you get the cards back, just instantly, you can instantly control their card back to wherever you need it to be. All right guys, so now that you know how to use the crimp control, I'm gonna show you guys the little trick that I did in the performance. So all you're gonna need for this trick is just a card box, that's really all you're gonna need, and the deck of cards. It's completely impromptu. So first, I would shuffle the deck here, and then I would just glimpse at the top card. In this case, I have an eight, okay? And I can do that in many different ways. I can overhand shuffle the cards like this, and I can actually just control any card I want to. So let's say I shuffle the cards a bunch, and then I find a card I like, let's say a seven. I'm gonna use the overhand shuffle control to just thumb this one card off and then shuffle the cards on top. So now if I square up the cards, that card that I peeked at on the bottom will now be on the top. And I'm just gonna remember that it's a seven. So once I do that, I'm gonna spread the cards out on the table and have the spectator touch any card in the entire pack. So they can touch any card, but I tell them to not look at it because it's gonna be a mystery card. And now all you're gonna do is take this card, it doesn't matter what it is, but you're gonna switch it out for the top card by using a top change. And I do this like just like that. So that's what a top change is. If you guys don't know how to do it, I have done some in-depth tutorials, but I'll do a very quick one right here. So essentially you wanna make sure you put the box to the right of your body because you're gonna turn your entire body over to the right. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna push off the top card, just like this. You're gonna push the top card off with your thumb. And I like to hold the selection in my hand with my index pinky here and thumb. These are the three fingers that are mainly contacting the card. The middle and ring finger here are actually gonna be lifting up and they're gonna be contacting the top card as I slide it into my hand. So I'm gonna lift up those fingers. The top card here is gonna go underneath the card in my hand. And all I'm gonna do now is take my thumb and place it on top of that card and just pull it in, okay? And now I've switched the cards out. You just have to practice with the angles and the speed and it should look pretty natural. But what you're gonna do is essentially just move your left hand to pick up the box. That's what it should look like. So this hand remains stationary and all you do is pick up the box just like this and put the card that they just touched under the box. But in reality, you've switched that random card on the top and now the seven of hearts is under the box, which is what you want. Okay, perfect. So now you can shuffle the cards as much as you want and now you can have the spectator select any card. And this is where the crimp control comes in. So they can touch any card Let's say this one, the six of clubs, you're gonna do the crimp just like this on the bottom, square it up 
hand the deck over to, to be shuffled. And there you go. The trick is almost over. It's really that easy. So the cards are getting shuffled as much as the spectator wants. They can shuffle it as much or as little as they want. You're gonna get the cards back, find the crimp. You can just cut it to the top or you can just do a pharaoh shuffle like this. I mean, honestly, whatever you guys wanna do is fine. So now that the card's controlled to the top, I just remember what the number is that I forced over there. So I remember it's a seven. So all I'm gonna do is shuffle six cards to the top and that will put the top card in the seventh position. So if I just shuffle one, two, three, four, five, six, I throw the rest of the deck on the top and all that does is it controls the card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven right there, six of clubs, because I put six cards on top of it. After I control the card, I can actually just shuffle the cards even more and then just maintain those cards on the bottom. So it looks like I'm just further shuffling the cards, but I'm actually not disturbing the top half of the deck. And at this point, you're gonna be performing the cross cut force, which is essentially where you take half the cards, cut them to the side, and then take the other half and place it diagonally on top. And you're gonna have the spectator do this themselves. So they, you tell them to cut anywhere, and then you tell them to take the other half and place it on top diagonally. And that will just set up the cards for the last part. And you say, okay, we'll get back to that later. So remember, in the beginning, I spread out the cards and you were able to touch any random card and you went for this one. So we can look at it now. Okay, we have the seven of hearts. You cut the cards anywhere, right? How crazy would it be if from where you cut, if we counted seven cards if we landed on your selection? That would be insane. And now all you do is you just lift up the top packet here and you say, from where you cut, I just want you to count seven cards. It gives the illusion here that this is the middle of the deck, but in reality, this is the top half of the deck because remember, they cut the cards like this and then you put the bottom half on top. So this really is just the top half of the deck. But since you're lifting up this half and you're using your hand here to give this little gesture, it really gives the illusion and the spectator will believe that this is the middle of the deck. So you ask them to count seven cards and they will do this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And when they get to seven, you ask them what the card was. They say six of clubs and there you go, boom. And if you guys want to, what you can do is you can take the card because there might still be a little bit of a crimp in there. So what you can do is just kind of feel around or look for the crimp. And all you do is before you flip it over, you just kind of straighten it out. And there you go. I've already straightened out the crimp and it feels like a completely normal card. So now you can hand it out for examination and now there will be literally nothing to find and everything is completely examinable at this point. So yeah, that is the tutorial for the trick right there. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. The main thing I want you guys to learn from this video is that crimp control because it can be used for thousands and thousands of card tricks. So you guys can literally use this now whenever you want and I hope you guys start to use it in a lot more of your card tricks. And yeah, so that is the trick guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.